Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the October 14th, 2016 edition of the Intuit Developer Friday Morning Hangout. I'm your host, David Leary. I'm the Intuit Small Business Ecosystem Evangelist. You can follow me on Twitter at David Leary. You can follow Intuit Developer at Intuit Dev. Uh, today, we have two uh, guests coming on to talk about their APIs and their involvement with the upcoming QuickBooks Connect Small Business Tech Hackathon, which is taking place next Saturday and Sunday in San Jose, California. Um, our first guest is uh, Casey Burns. She's the VP of marketing at getpostman.com. And our other guest is Artem Gunchark Brook, and he's from API.ai. He'll be joining it maybe about 25 minutes in to a half hour in. Um, with that said, let me uh, stop, uh, get to the next slide here. So in general, most of today is gonna be all about uh, the hackathon and QuickBooks Connect. So those of you who have not registered yet, QuickBooks Connect is coming up. I think we're eight and a half days away. So please go to quickbooksconnect.com. Make sure you get registered. The hackathon is currently sold out, but if you do a, nor a full QuickBooks Connect registration, we will still promise to hold you a spot in the hackathon because um, we, we do anticipate maybe some people might um, not, not show up at the last minute. But so if you go to quickbooksconnect.com, you can still register for the hackathon on Saturday and Sunday. Um, and then on the main sessions, we're going to have developed, we have about eight or nine developer sessions for you to attend. Uh, we also have open office hours to attend. And then you can also, as always, you're free to attend any of the other sessions that are available at Crippers Connect. There's sessions on running a small business, there's sessions for accountants, there's a sessions um, just in general um, feedback. On, if you want feedback on your website, there's coaching sessions. So definitely consider coming to Crippers Connect for 24th through the 26th. And uh, hit up that site and get registered for the hackathon. Let me change out of this screen and flip back over to blue jeans here. Stop sharing, sorry. This, uh, as, as some of you know, previously we've done Google Hangouts and that has been killed and now we're using new technology and it takes me longer to find it. Stop sharing, there we go, sorry about that. Hey everybody. And uh, hey, Casey, welcome to the Friday morning hangout. I'm glad to see you here. You may need to go off mute if you're currently on mute. I am, I am unmuted now. Great, great, great. And I, I see uh, Courtney uh, joined from API.ai. And Courtney, I'll uh, introduce you guys and have you guys jump on um, towards the second half of the hangout today. So Casey, what is Get Postman? Postman is uh, an API developer tool, a complete tool chain for helping developers working with APIs to uh, share, test, document, and eventually monitor their APIs. We have a free product um, for Chrome, Mac, and Windows. Uh, we have about 3 million installed downloads, downloads and users of the free product. And uh, early this year, we've launched a paid product that has additional team sharing and collaboration tools. Great, great, great. And so I know that we recently have uh, integrated some of our APIs with Postman so people can troubleshoot their API calls, especially with connecting their OAuth and uh, some of that. How many developers are using it? Like, is it just comp big companies like Intuit connecting and setting up their APIs on it, or is it kind of fit all size developers with their it, APIs? Yeah, it's a good question because it does fit all size developers. Anybody working with an API is just a little bit easier. Our our CEO wrote, um, Abhinav wrote the, the original tool because as he put it, uh, I started using curl and I hated it. <laughs> So what he did is he wrote a tool to make his life a little bit easier personally, and then it, it took off and, and eventually became a company. We have, um, like I said, about 3 million developers. Um, and from our data, it looks like about 30,000 different companies. Um, and then even, even more domains that look to be um, uh, individuals. So uh, we've had, we have a lot of big companies. We've actually kind of back in, backed into it. 61 of the top the Fortune 100 companies are using Postman in some form. You know, nine out of 10 of the top cloud computing companies, the nine out of 10 top retailers. So lots of big companies, but individuals um, in, a, in a lot of cases too. Got it. So before we kind of jump into like what you're going to do at the Cooper's Connect Hackathon, I know you're coming in as a sponsor and you're going to be there helping developers use your product and maybe there's new ways and in, in educate and, and new functionality that's in Postman that maybe people aren't utilizing, people could hack on and build on. Before we do that, can you just kind of maybe share your screen or do a small demo of Postman just so those of us who haven't seen it can actually kind of just get a feel for it a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. That'd be great. So let me uh, 
go ahead and do that. And can you see my screen there? Perfect. It looks good. Okay. So I'm going to just do a quick demo of the of the product. Um, this is Postman. I use it for Mac. Um, it looks extremely similar on Chrome and on Windows, a little bit different, but just on the margin. So the, the most typical use case for folks using Postman for the first time uh, is that they go over, they decide they want to test an API. They want to run a write and run a request for an API. And so I'm going to show you a couple of those. What you have over here on the left-hand side is history. So this is my copy. So you can see things, all of the requests that I've run in Postman over the last couple of days, longer, I guess. I'm not, I'm not on this account. I'm going to just pick up this first one. So you can see here that I, I wrote a request to hit the Google Maps API. And in particular, I hit it to get uh, uh, information for a particular address. That happens to be our office address in San Francisco. Um, and let me just uh, move you over a little and see if I can. So if I were going to write the request, it goes right up here. You can see I'm writing a GET request. A um, couple things using Postman makes it a lot easier. So I can put in parameters and I can write them down here. If I wanted to change this, it would show up in the request automatically. Let's say I want to do 200 Jackson Street instead. You can see that it changes up there. It's just a little easier to do. This happens to be my API key for the Google Maps API. You can put in your own. And then when I run the request, which is what I would do over here, I'd press send. I will get some response. Uh, in a very nice, easy to see way. So if you go down here, you'll see that this is all the information that this particular API sends back. And you know, typically you would get it looking a little bit more like this, but with with Postman, you can immediately look at it. It's just a little bit prettier. The whole thing is just easier to do. Then if I wanted to get a little fancier, let's say I just wanted to make sure that this was working correctly, I might want to add a test. Uh, make sure it worked. And I, I'm actually going to use code snippets over here, which is a nice thing that people use. Let's just make sure, let's say I want to use, I want to make sure that the response time was less than 20 milliseconds. I click on that and it, 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 the Postman helps you pop up the test. So now if I ran this again, I'm going to add another one actually. I'm going to write um, status code is 200. So response time and status code, two very simple tests. And if I wanted to send the request again, what I'll get is not only the body, the same as I did before with all of that information, but it will also include results of the tests. So, you know, I, I have a, this is a really great tool for setting up your request, making sure it's getting tested properly, and then looking, examining the responses in a way that's just a little bit easier visually to work out. It's really a terrific thing. Um, and then, so that's the, that's the basic way you use a request or we use Postman. And then, what a lot of people do after that is they say, well, that was one great request, but what I want to do is a couple of requests. And that's what we would call a collection. So in this case, I wrote, I have a, a collection. The request I just showed you is the first request of the collection I'm going to show, which has um, three requests in it. And in this case, what I'm doing is writing a couple of requests that are, are related. So that first request I just showed you um, was actually, let me just go to the request itself. It's a little easier to see. That first request is capturing some information from the Google API um, about 415 Jackson Street. And what I, in this particular collection, what I do is I take the latitude and longitude from this, this API hit, and then I go to a different API, and I use that latitude and longitude to get the weather for that address that I provided. And then in my last request, which is right here, what I do is I post the weather to a Slack channel. So this is my collection has three specific uh, requests in it. It's easy to see. I have tests for each of them. And the really cool thing is I can establish variables. So I have a variable that goes that takes the latitude and longitude from the first request, supplies it into the second request, and I take the information from the second request in a variable, which is um, the weather. And then I share it with the last one and I post it to Slack. So I, I have three requests sitting here. I can run them together. I can write tests around them and they all sit right here. It's easy to, it's easy to examine them. It's easy to change them and it's easy to share them. That's cool. The collections is a really interesting concept on this because it, it, now you're utilizing multiple parts of your Postman 
APIs, right? In right. One spot instead of, yeah, because it's usually your try your, your ultimate goals, right? Is the end case, right? Right. It does it actually case. post that through? And then you sometimes it's hard to know where's it breaking, not breaking. So if you put that in here, now you can go, okay, hey, at least I know my calls are working and the responses that's, are that's working. That's exactly maybe, right. Maybe it's and actually it's, bug in my code now, not so much in my calls, maybe. <laughs> maybe. That's right. I, you know, with this particular collection, um, it's true. Like what I what I get here is that instead of running in, running individual calls and trying to bring it out, I can put the whole collection together, and I can it, and I actually with the tool. I can run it. So I'm going to take this collection and use what we call our runner um, feature, which takes a second. And so I can, I can run a collection. I can run any of my collections from here. What I'm going to do is run the collection I just showed you, which I creatively called weather to Slack. Um, in this particular case, I have an environment, which is another way of storing variables. And I can just run it. And so over here, what I have is the results of all three of those calls. And if anything broke in the whole collection, I would know where. Um, and so, you know, it's another great way of doing it. So I can, instead of running the collection, I can actually just use the runner. They can run in sequence, and then I can look at and examine where the things where things happen. I can show you an example of a of a <laughs> I could show you an example of a collection that I haven't quite debugged yet, but you get the idea. Oh, sorry, can't hear you. It's from it. So it looks like Postman's kind of expanding out. It's not just a way to explore somebody's APIs, but you can actually start using it to test API calls you're making yourself, store those, have those, so you could quickly trouble. You really use troubleshoot with your customers. Yeah, you I mean, troubleshoot. And, and one of the newer products, so like I mentioned, we have a, a free product and a paid product. What I've shown you so far is all our free product um, and okay. completely downloadable. Our paid product has a couple more features that are um, that are you know kind of better for teams and for production environments. So one of the things you can do with in terms of collaboration with a uh, a paid product is you get this team library over here. So I can look at other, um, let me just make sure I'm not on a, so I can go over here to team library and I can see all of the collections that my entire team has shared. And I can share my collection if I want, and I can give people a uh, view only or view and edit. So you can collaborate a lot more. The other thing you can do is uh, share documentation. So using my weather to Slack, example, you get a web view of the documentation for that collection, which has all of the requests in it, um, a little information about it, and then some information about sample requests in different languages. So that's pretty cool too. And is this and only like for my team or could I share this whether to Slack with the whole entire 3 million Postman community? You could absolutely do that. That's actually what Intuit has chosen to do with their collection, not documentation, but they, they share what, what Intuit has done is created a collection on how to use the Intuit API. And the collection has exactly like my weather to Slack example uh, requests and details and how it's set up and they share it. So that way, if, if, a, if a, a developer is trying to get, get familiar with the Intuit um, API, they can download the collection and they already have something working, right? That is tech, has tests and everything in it so that it's easier to use. Um, so sharing is a really big deal. And we have a lot of large companies that use what we call our run in Postman button which is a button they put on their website that allows anybody using Postman to download a collection of examples of how to use their API. Got it, so somebody's on a documentation page, or I'm a developer, I have a documentation page. Maybe my, I'm, my documentation is not great and I don't wanna to have to paste in code to my page, I can just provide that button and drop them exactly. into Postman and they can right. see the code and they there. drop it in. It's really a nice thing because if you have Postman, all you have to do is click in the run in Postman button and you, you go straight to Postman and the collection pops up and you got it, right? Like everything's there and you don't have to cut and paste and it's in a format that everybody is, you know, commonly using, which is Postman. Okay. Um, the last thing I wanted to show you was our something called Postman Monitors. I remember a minute ago, I ran that collection and it I got the results of that um, that particular run. I can also set up a monitor which will run that collection on whatever frequency I want and let me examine the performance of it. So this is actually my weather to Slack uh, monitor. Um, it gets run, I have it set up so it just runs once a day, um, but I could run it if I were testing it to make sure it was up, I could do it every minute or, or every five minutes. And I have it, and you know, I have a little dashboard understanding how it's, been, how it's worked. 
So it, you know, we have this, this tool is really designed to help somebody who's working with APIs on every, every aspect. If you're just trying to figure out how one works, if you're trying to work on a, a set of um, requests together with your team, um, if you want to test an API, if you want to document it and share it, or if you need to monitor it going forward. Awesome. That's great. So it's kind of three tools, right? Exploring, testing, monitoring. Yeah. All in one platform. We really want to be the complete tool chain for developers using APIs. Got it. So when you get to Krippus Connect, you come to the hackathon, I definitely can see how every developer there, just to help them, regardless of what they're hacking on and what they're building at the hackathon, where Postman's going to help them. Yeah. Like, um, then I also see kind of a use case where, you know, if a developer has their own APIs, and they want to build documentation or make their documentation deeper, they could use Postman to do that. Is there any, uh, think about, because the hackathon itself is about small business technology, right? Right. It's about solving a small business problem. Mm -hmm. or, do you think of any creative use cases or have you seen anybody do anything creative with Postman where, hey, here's a way to like solve a small business problem using Postman and your app or... I mean, it's kind of wide open, right? It's the point of the right. No, I think creative. that's a really it's a really good question. When I looked at the devices that were being um, that are being used in the hackathon, I, I was I was pretty excited. I, I I don't know from a small business standpoint, but certainly from a uh, nerdy, I like to make things work. I can imagine a lot of cool things to do. Um, you know, I. I don't know the Amazon the Amazon Echo to kind of grabbed me because you can imagine all sorts of collections that would do a series of things that I would want. I'd wanted to turn on and find my favorite music at a certain time, or you know, with the Nest. Although we were talking earlier that maybe the Nest doesn't have an API, I can imagine writing collections to do all sorts of things that I want to do regularly and that I want to make sure they work every time, um, and then setting up a monitor to make it go when I need it. Um, so, you know, in the case of the weather, my, my, my weather to Slack example, I just, I just liked the idea that in one place I could hit three APIs that I needed to touch and not have to, and have it working and sitting in one spot. And, um, and I can imagine doing things that are similar with the tools there. I don't know about a business application. Maybe I'm thinking too personal, right? Well, I mean, I, I think ultimately I said into it, right? We, we think of small businesses, small business. We have 100,000 of accountants, right? We think of yeah. them as small businesses and entrepreneurs. And right. then we have, you know, anywhere, depending on how you count and when you count, anywhere from 20 to 40,000 developers, right? Sometimes right. people just create developer accounts on an accident. But you know, there's, there's about 40,000 historically 40,000 developers have built stuff for QuickBooks in some shape mm -hmm. or form, right? Mm -hmm. And so we think of all of them as small business and entrepreneurs too. So somebody could possibly build something that only developers are going to use, right? Right, right, but, right. But, right. But made, and that's still a valid business case. They're solving a business problem for a bunch of developers, right? So it's very, very valid. Obviously, you're that's what you have, right? You have right. a tool just for developers. So like, that right. totally works and makes sense. Um, it's exciting because I can see how we're like with these collections and um, uh uh, API.ai is going to be here on next. I'm going to introduce some uh, members from that team. Pavel's here. He just uh, joined. It'd be interesting to see because I think those collections will probably possibly work well. Um, and I don't know how familiar is Pavel is with your stuff, but um, I could see where if I'm coming to a hackathon, I'm just a two-member team, right? Maybe somebody else is going to go work on our front end and our UI and somebody else is on our back end could just really start building the collections and really the use cases, right? Right. As collections. And, and that's then, what that's what, that's really what we're hoping for the hackathon is that you know what we want to provide for a prize is the most creative use of a collection, because it turns out a lot of people get get Postman and they write a request and it looks pretty and they keep it in their history and they go back to the history and they never really understand the the great power of collections and variables. It just makes life so much easier to have all of that in one spot, where you know, what you're trying to do, all the variables sit right there, all of the tests are right there next to it. You can monitor it if you wanted to, and it, the whole collection does what you want. Like without, it, it's not just a way to test the API and then go back to your real job. This is the programming environment um, for that. Co the collection can be the programming environment. Great. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, give Pavel a couple minutes to, cause he just jumped on to kind of get ready to go. Um, well, he's getting his things, uh, systems configured, his camera and making sure he's ready to kind of set up to give a demo. I'm gonna open up the questions. I know Jack and Jonathan are both on. Uh, they tend to come to the Hangouts on a regular basis. Uh, Jack, Jonathan, did you guys want to unmute and uh, take turns if you guys have any questions for Casey or any questions about Postman at all? I'll take that as a no, Jack and Jonathan. <laughs> 
You know, we 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 actually used uh, I, I used Postman recently to to do something kind of kind of fun. Um, we we um our office has a, a our office in San Francisco is very small, and uh, we have a we share some space, and so our conference rooms are um, shared across a couple of folks. And it's you know as as, as always the case, conference rooms come at a uh, at a premium, and so we discovered that no matter what, we ended up kind of scheduling a meeting and then forgetting to go over and um, ske schedule the conference room until it was too late. So we wrote a little collection to the, the keys off of when we schedule um, a meeting to go ping the API for the scheduler of the conference rooms, find an open one and schedule it for us. Um, I don't know if that's a small business application, but it made our lives a lot easier last week. <laughs> last week. In, I think there's always, you know, small business applications with things like this. So, and that's what's okay. interesting. Uh, Internet of Things. There's so many teeny solutions that have a big impact, right? If you think about maybe a, right. a temperature gauge inside a freezer that autom like at an ice cream store that automatic once the temperature drops below or goes above a certain temperature and the ice cream is going to melt, it sends out a text or an email and so or a notification to the owner of the ice cream shop's phone, so he knows right. he can run over there. Troubleshoot what's going on. Maybe somebody turned the power off on accident, right? right. Because that could save him five thousand dollars in ice cream inventory. So even though that's a sixty dollar device and a very simple problem it's solving, but it is a big problem for those who experience. So yeah, absolutely, they're all valid business cases. Right, 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 right. For sure. I, I was um, muted before. I'm, I was, was trying to. Jump oh, in. you have a question, Jonathan? No problem. Well, uh, yeah, I, I've used Postman, but I didn't. I didn't know. I'm so glad to have seen your demo because I didn't realize about the the collections at all, or or even the tests. That's that's pretty cool. Um, but do you, is there logic? Can you build logic into a collection? Yeah, you know what? Actually, you can. So um, I, I don't have a good example. Do I have a good example? Well, the one you just stated okay. sounded like you know. Yeah, no. So that's a it's a simple one, right? The sim what my the 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 weather to Slack has a little bit of logic in it. Like it doesn't. It, it, you have to have a good response um, from uh, you have to have a good response from the Google API to actually take the next step, which is then make a call to uh, <clears throat> the weather API. <clears throat> excuse me. And so there's a little bit of logic in there, but you can you can make it very robust, right? You can um, you can you can set an extra request, you can set the order a little bit differently. And but mostly what my current one has is it sort of says if you get a good response from the Google API, like you actually got a latitude and longitude back, then go hit the next one. And if you get a good weather response, like it's up and working, then go hit and post it to Slack. So you can put a lot of logic in there. Let me just show you, let me just go back there and see if that's, um, let me share my screen again. And uh, I'll show you a little more slowly some of that stuff. So if I go back to um, Builder, which is where I was, and this is my collection. Um, so you can sort of see um, there's the there's the request and here here are actually the tests for this particular request. It starts off with did I get a good response? If you get a good response, then then I set some global variables lat long and formatted address. So I have location data and I set the lat long in there and I set the formatted address. Both of those things I got from the Google um, a, the Google Maps API. And then in the next request. Um, I do the same. <clears throat> excuse me. I do the same thing. So in the tests, again, I only I only keep going if there was a good response, and if there is a good response, I take the temperature, the summary, and the result. I get the information and and put it in again a couple more global variables, and then uh, I go to Slack. And in this case, it's a post. And <clears throat> excuse me. What I do is I I round it and I make it into I make it into Fahrenheit, and then I set the title and the body for the post that's going to go into Slack. Um, so there's a little bit of logic in here. In this particular case, it's all based just on whether I got a decent response. I think in my, I have a, I have this non-working, very cool collection because I, I let my um, authorization expire. A Spotify playlist generator, which hits the Spotify API, and figures out what my favorite artists are and then gets related artists and creates a playlist from it. <clears throat> and that is definitely a little bit more, again, it's based mostly on response code, but you can make it more on type of uh, response you get. So you can do a whole bunch of other things in there. Did I answer your question? Yeah, so you can develop a little script effectively is what you're doing. 
Yeah, you can. We have we have te the tests. We call them tests, but they really are post request scripts, and there are pre request scripts too. Um, and and people do lots of interesting things with them. We have a, we had one client telling us the other customer telling us the other day that um, they have they only run five collections, but each of them are um, between forty and fifty requests, and they're all chained, which is what you know they're chained. You get one, and then the variable goes to the next one, and there's a bunch of logic in that too. Um, so it really is a very and then then he runs it you know, when it went once a day. So it's a, his, his version of the world is very much, we have a collection, it does a bunch of things, all the logic sits in there um, and uh, takes care of our API calls. That's true. So are these collections then compiled and used somehow, or is it just running your in your application, or how does how would yeah run would in the, with run in the application, and you can also run the collections from the command line if you use a tool called Newman, which you can download from npm, and uh, other folks put that into and then they, you can put it into your build system right, but that's the other way to to run it, not just from the from the Postman app as well. You can you can download it download Newman and run it from the command line. I mean, do you, do you anticipate people using your app as part of other apps or just really for testing and development? Well, I think uh, part of other apps. I mean, testing and development, yeah, testing, development, sharing, uh, monitoring, I imagine. I'm not, maybe I don't understand your question about a part of other apps. I mean, if you develop that 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 example that you gave where the, where the person had many, many different calls, um, do you, do you, that person's using it as part of their part of their business. Right, 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 right. That's, um, no, that, that's a good point. That's a good question. Um, I don't know of examples of customers doing that. Let me let me get back to you though, because I'm sure someone else in my organization is more familiar with that. Okay, that's great. And uh, I'm going to get Pavel uh, introduced here. Um, just before I do that, when you showed your last uh, script, Casey, I just had an idea. So if somebody wants to build this, I definitely know this is a small business problem. All the employees get to work. Maybe they have some music on on Spotify, and every employee keeps changing what they're listening to over and over again. So it's really easy. Somebody with their some timesheet app could take their timesheet API based on who's clocked in. They could yeah. go pull the best playlist optimized right. for who's clocked in at work that day. So there's always a small business use case somewhere in this stuff. So I, yeah. I'm glad you triggered that. But no, it's actually very hackable, right? That's the cool yeah. thing about it. It's very hackable. Yeah, and that that, that would save. I mean, that's that's lost productivity, right? Every time the employees are going over, changing somebody else's music back and forth, back and forth, you know, or even the timesheet people could figure, they could actually do some experiments, which Spotify playlist is, makes their employees the most productive. Right. Right. And they can, <laughs> they can do true. some stuff like that. So there's tons and tons of things that can be hacked together. So it's, it's really exciting. So with that said, um, Casey, I'm going to, don't, don't leave. I still want to talk to you before you get off. Um, I'm going to put you on mute. No problem. I'm going to introduce, uh, Pava, uh, so teeny, I can't see my eyes. Uh, it's Pavel Sorotin. You might have to correct me. I can hardly read it. So teeny. Uh, yeah, he's a product right. manager yeah. at uh, API.ai, which has now been acquired. They're part of the big Google family. So it's like a big, serious business now. Um, did you want to uh, introduce yourself a little bit, Pavel, and then give some background on API.ai? I don't know how many people are familiar with it. And then maybe we'll jump into a demo, et cetera. Sure. Yeah. So my name is Pavel uh, and, uh, well, uh, uh, I'm, uh, as David mentioned, I'm a product manager at API AI, uh, which is now part of Google. Uh, and uh, so API AI is, uh, uh, is a platform uh, which uh, provides tools to build conversational interfaces uh, for applications, devices, and uh, now uh, popular, uh, popular bots. Uh, and um, uh, so the company started uh, six years ago, uh, and uh, uh, we started with, a, with an application, with a uh, B2C application called Assistant. Uh, uh, and uh, so <clears throat> uh, it was uh, up uh, in the uh, Play Store and App Store, uh, available for multiple platforms. Uh, uh, and uh, we got uh, more than 30 million users there. Uh, and uh, well, after four years of working on the assistant, uh, was, uh, well, during actually, uh, we were, were getting requests from uh, all types of uh, uh, businesses, uh, companies, and uh, independent developers uh, to, to build something uh, like assistant for them. Uh, and uh, so uh, this is when we got an idea to, to build a platform where uh, uh, everyone can do something like that by themselves. Uh, and so uh, two, a little bit more than two years ago, uh, API went live. 
Uh, and uh, so what we try to accomplish is to uh, provide easy to use um, uh, uh, tools uh, to build uh, uh, concessional interfaces. So basically making uh, complex things of uh, processing natural language uh, 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 requests uh, well, uh, easy for, uh, for every developer. Uh, now we have more than, uh, actually I think it's close to 70,000 uh, developers registered uh, in the platform uh, from all types of industries, uh, all types of, all, all sizes of companies, uh, uh, starting with the uh, uh, students and uh, going to large enterprise, uh, enterprises uh, which are building uh, different kinds of solutions uh, with API. So, so just, um, I, I know that people are like, oh, VR is the thing of 2016. I could probably argue like chatbots are the hottest thing of 2016 for sure. Everybody's having a chatbot. And so do you handle both like if somebody, somebody so I'm a developer, I have X app, I want to add a chatbot so I could use you, but can, can I also do like a voice integration and just do voice and then use under the use you under the covers? Like where, where's the lines stop? Sure, uh, sure. Uh, so, uh, so we are focusing on processing text. So, uh, we, uh, so when we get the text input, uh, we understand what this is about, uh, and uh, we provide the uh, well, basically a translation into structured data, uh, machine readable uh, structured data. Uh, and uh, so, the source of this uh, text, uh, uh, well, it, uh, well, it doesn't matter to us. Uh, it can be uh, well the text input by the end user, or it could arrive from uh, voice recognition. So uh, if the app is using voice recognition to well, this is the source is an input source uh, from the end user. Uh, yeah, we we can get the text from there. Uh, but but you don't handle the processing of voice to text. Uh, so uh, it, it is built in in, in the platform, uh, but okay. uh, well, it's, since it's not our focus, we're focusing mostly uh, about uh, text uh, text recognition and. Uh, so uh, we have some developers who are using our uh, our solution, uh, where uh, well, no other solution is available, and uh, but uh, we are pretty much uh, agnostic in this, uh, well, uh, well, voice recognition agnostic uh, uh, in this case. Got it. Got it. Can you want to jump in and possibly share and just show us a little bit of just a small demo of it? Oh, sure. That AI, so everybody uh, can see it for sure. And while Pavel's bringing that up, everybody just, this is a API.ai is also going to be a sponsor at the, uh, the Crypto's Connect Hackathon next weekend. So any of you that want to build using their APIs, definitely uh, come and do that. They'll be on site offering support. Pavel, will you actually be there or will some other members of your team? Uh, unfortunately, I have um, uh, another trip scheduled uh, okay. uh, on the same dates. Uh, so the, there will be uh, some of our developers there. Uh, so they Got will uh, answer, uh, answer questions and help me out. Uh, Perfect. So, uh, can you see my screen? I can see. You're good to go. All right. So this is the uh, this is the, the developer console uh, which you see when you register at API.ai. Uh, and uh, so I already created an agent, and this is the first step we should do after you uh, register there. Uh, and uh, an agent is essentially a conversational layer of uh, application or bot. Uh, and uh, so, uh, the uh, in the agent uh, to, to build a conversational interface, uh, you create uh, intents, and intents are uh, the, well, basically the uh, the representation of an intent of the user. Uh, so uh, there is a collection of phrases, uh, how people may form a request, uh, which map into, uh, into into a certain action in the uh, application or bot. And uh, entities, uh, uh, they're basically uh, reference uh, uh, reference points of uh, what uh, what the uh, application is about, and I will talk a little bit about it a little bit later. So um, let's uh, uh, let's create an intent. Uh, and uh, uh, so uh, one of our favorite examples is uh, hotel booking because we all like to travel, and uh, uh, well, this is a pretty robust uh, uh, example to show. So uh, create an intent. I call it uh, hotel uh, hotel booking, uh, and then uh, here I provide uh, a few examples of how my my end users could request uh, uh, hotel booking. And so I will write uh, book hotel, and I need a, a room and. London uh, for tomorrow, 
Uh, and uh, so I'm writing it in, in natural language, so it's not uh, so we're not using here any syntax or, or anything. So uh, so everything is uh, exactly the same how our users may request uh, well the the action that I'm, I'm building the uh, agent for. Uh, and so here uh, in in this example uh, we, we do automatic highlighting, so basically uh, uh, named entity recognition uh, for, uh, for for the places that we think are relevant uh, here. And so, in this use case, uh, uh, the relevant uh, pieces of data are uh, city, uh, so London in this case, and uh, uh, date. And so, you can uh, uh, well, they they are all mapping into into parameters, uh, and all the parameters from an intent they are grouped together uh, in the table uh, uh, below the uh, section uh, with the examples. And you, I can change the name of the parameter, call it destination, uh, if I prefer it this way. Uh, and uh, if uh, for some reason uh, uh, for, for some reason uh, the, the this is processed by uh, a wrong entity and uh, as I mentioned entity is a, uh, is a uh, is a reference uh, uh, to to the uh, knowledge base that we have for uh, for this um, uh, for, for this uh, agent and uh, I can change the entity uh, so we have a number of system entities that uh, that we developed uh, so uh, so our de developers don't have to, uh, and uh, so we started with the most complex ones like time and date because uh, there are so many different ways of how people may form. Uh, for example, date request they can say an exact date like October fourteenth, and they or they can say tomorrow, yesterday, the day after tomorrow, every second Tuesday, things like that. Uh, so uh, we covered all that, uh, and we have uh, simpler entities like uh, well, city. Uh, of cities, uh, uh, countries, or so colors, or so, um, so just you know, uh, names, uh, first names, give the uh, last names. Uh, and uh, uh, you, you can build your own entity if uh, something is not covered. For example, in, a, in an example, um, uh, I want to stay uh, in, uh, in a Hyatt Hotel uh, in Los Angeles. So uh, we don't have. Uh, so we found that uh, Los Angeles is a uh, is a city, and uh, we signed the uh, the parameter name that I chose uh, earlier. Uh, but uh, well, what is not uh, highlighted here is uh, well, uh, the uh, the hotel chain that uh, um, that uh, uh, I, I want to extract from uh, my user's request here. So uh, I, I, I just highlight the uh, the, the space that uh, that is not uh, annotated uh, automatically, and I create a, a new entity uh, by myself. Oh, I did say so. So just so I make sure I'm following along here, Craig. So out of the box, you have some entities created, like location, right. city, like that. But if I know my users have there's a certain uh, set of verbiage I know my users will have, especially around QuickBooks, right? I, mm -hmm. I can see that, right? I can go in and just add these in here. That's right. Because yeah. there's a high probability my users are going to do that. That's awesome. Yeah. So you you, you, can, you can build your own entities, and uh, so uh, for, for, you you can do it manually in the console. But obviously, uh, well, uh, for for most of the use cases, the, the lists are large, so uh, you don't have to do it by hand. Uh, well, manually you can. Uh, we, we have a, a dedicated entity endpoint uh, which you can use to uh, update it uh, well programmatically. Got it. So, uh, so I come back and I highlight uh, uh, Hyatt's hotel chain, uh, and uh, so I will write a couple of more examples uh, uh, to uh, to process uh, a little bit more information. So, hotel in Zisk uh, for two people. Uh, so from no. Number, uh, so we'll call the number as uh, guests. Uh, and uh, this is not date period, I uh, prefer it to be just uh, date. Uh, so I save it. And, uh, uh, and I, I will define the action. So what, what happens now when I click save is that uh, so uh, the agent uses all these examples uh, provided uh, in the in the user size section uh, and uh, uh, we uh, apply our uh, so they are taken into our machine learning uh, uh, engine and uh, so we apply a lot of uh, uh, different machine learning techniques to uh, expand the uh, number of variations of how of uh, 
number of variations of possible user inputs uh, into uh, in, into your application or bot. Uh, and uh, for example, uh, I can test it here right in the console. Like, can you uh, book a hotel? So even though uh, I don't have an example here, uh, uh, exact example like uh, can you book a hotel, uh, the agent still understands uh, what, what I'm talking about. Uh, uh, let's try something else. Like uh, I need a hotel in, uh, in New York. So uh, the uh, the parameter destination is filled with New York uh, because uh, so our agent already knows so uh, well the, in the different types of cities uh, in different positions of the uh, on, of the request they uh, mean uh, destination and uh, so and uh, right in in here you can uh, even build uh, uh, some kind of dialogues uh, for example uh, the intent is not complete uh, in in our use case for, for hotels if we don't know uh, where the person is going and uh, and when the person is is, is going to uh, uh, travel um, and so I mark up uh, uh, the parameters that are required for the intent to be uh, uh, complete as required, and I will uh, define prompts here, uh, which uh, which the agent will use to to get this information from the end user. And uh, you can write uh, uh, well, different types of prompts so your agent is not too boring, uh, like where are you going, and uh, what's destination. Now, so I will write uh, and uh, so when uh, all the information is uh, collected, I can even write uh, um, a speech response like uh, uh, okay, searching hotels for. So I click save, uh, and uh, so let us try how it works. Uh, I'm writing like um, I need a hotel. Uh, so and uh, this is when uh, so uh, I, I wrote a, uh, a, 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 a well there is a request uh, which doesn't doesn't contain any uh, information uh, to to fill the slots for uh, for the destination and uh, date parameters. That's why uh, my, uh, my agent is now asking uh, uh, where are you going. And so uh, this is the tool that is called slot filling, and uh, you can read more about it in, the, in our documentation. Uh, and uh, so you don't have to follow uh, the questions one by one. And uh, for example, if the uh, because it's not, it's not natural, and uh, uh, since our users uh, are using uh, natural language uh, to uh, interact with our bot, uh, they, they would prefer to say something like, uh, uh, well, uh, I like uh, Hayat, uh, and so uh, the uh, the hotel chain uh, parameter is filled with the, uh, with the with what we expected, uh, but the agent is still asking what's the destination, uh, and I can say uh, so we are uh, going to Miami uh, well, on Friday. Uh, so, uh, so here I provided both of the required parameters uh, in, in one request, and so uh, it's all filled with uh, with uh, with the relevant data. So Friday is oh, it's actually today, and uh, destination is uh, Miami, and uh, the the agent says, uh, okay, I'm searching for hotels for you. So this is one of the ways to build a, a dialogue uh, to to collect information from the, from the user to to get the, to certain action, uh, and uh, we have. Uh, uh, also, uh, uh, some other tools like uh, context, uh, which will different kinds of uh, uh, dialects. But I'm not sure how much time I have uh, uh, to uh, to demo it, or uh, sh should I just move forward to to some other parts of the platform? Yeah, I think maybe I, I think he, uh, the concepts really illustrated well here, right? Like uh, you're you're taking the plain text and you're extracting the prop the data that's needed out of it. And if I have data that I know is unique to me or my app or my use cases, I can add those as uh, variables and pull those out. So that's definitely understandable. Yeah, please, uh, if you want to run through some of the rest of the platform, right. um, sure. and then we'll jump into probably some questions. Mm -hmm. So, uh, uh, so, uh, so intents and entities uh, are used to build your own custom scenarios, uh, well, unique to your uh, to your uh, application. Uh, 
well, if you if you want to jumpstart with something uh, that we already have, so in the, the the this part is called domains. So basically, they are prepackaged uh, knowledge bases that we built, uh, and actually we started uh, building them for uh, our own uh, assistant, uh, well, the application that we had, uh, and there are uh, around 50, uh, 50 domains here, and uh, uh, for example, a small talk domain which is enabled by default for all our users process requests like hello. Uh, What's up? And uh, so, uh, so some of the domains like Smalltalk they provide uh, both classification like uh, What's up is Smalltalk greetings and the simplified version of uh, the request is What is up. So we're basically ma mapping into uh, a, a more more universal uh, type of uh, request. And uh, for Smalltalk, for example, we also provide uh, uh, speech responses. So if you click on the card with the uh, Smalltalk, uh, there is a uh, uh, toggle here fulfillment, uh, so you can uh, disable if you don't like our responses and uh, write your own. Uh, so these are domains, and uh, uh, so uh, when your agent is uh, uh, created and trained uh, with some uh, some information, uh, you can go into the training uh, training part of the uh, of the console uh, where you, you can see all the conversations uh, with all the, uh, with with your agent, and uh, uh, you can review them. Uh, for example, uh, if they are, if, if they if the request caught into uh, uh, into the correct intent, if, if if it's a wrong intent, you can click on it and uh, change. Uh, uh, well, assign it to a different intent or create a new intent. Uh, and uh, well, once you uh, change something, you click approve. So, uh, for example, like this, I click approve, and all the information is saved, and uh, you, your agent starts uh, retraining. So the SQ button in, uh, uh, is, is turning, uh, means, which means that uh, the agent is being retrained. And uh, so once it, it's done training, so it takes a couple of seconds. Uh, and uh, so uh, it starts responding uh, correctly. So then another important part, uh, which which we like very much, uh, is uh, one-click integrations with multiple platforms. So if you are building uh, 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 an application, uh, and uh, you you can basically well, uh, you, you can voice enable it with uh, uh, with us. Uh, and uh, the same agent can work in uh, in multiple platforms, so you don't have to uh, to build different agents for different platforms. And uh, so we introduced uh, a few integrations with one-click integrations with uh, most popular chat platforms. Th this explains so much because I was kind of like, wow, Facebook's really getting everybody's building, you know, bots for Facebook Messenger like crazy or Slack like crazy, but it's because they're probably using you and they have no extra work to do to make their bot work on exactly. Facebook Messenger. Yeah, God, and, uh, this explains so much. This screen right here explains a ton of why the explosion's happening. Yeah. Yeah, and if you are not building with uh, for uh, for messengers, uh, so we have SDKs for all the all the major platforms, so Android, iOS, and anything else that uh, that that you need. And actually, uh, for the testing purposes, uh, uh, so you can use uh, either this test console or you can, you can publish. Uh, uh, we call it agent page, agent demo page, uh, which you you will have a, a chatbot over here, and uh, you can chat chat test it here. Uh, if you uh, and uh, you can also test it in uh, in Slack. Uh, so basically, you click uh, enable and uh, with one click to test on Slack. Uh, so I don't have Slack installed on uh, on this computer, uh, but basically it creates a, a Slack bot uh, with just one click, uh, and uh, all your team can test it together with you. Uh, so this makes it uh, quite easy uh, to 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 build and test. And uh, so not all the uh, agents uh, can be uh, well can be fully created in uh, in, in the test uh, in uh, in our uh, developer console uh, because there may be some business logic and uh, so uh, as even in the use case with the uh, hotel booking you, you will need uh, well, the agent to connect to uh, to some like Expedia API or some other uh, travel uh, websites API and uh, you can build it uh, in, in your business logic and uh, uh, connect it to, uh, through our webhook and so basically you provide a uh, URL to your business logic here uh, and uh, so uh, this this URL receives the JSON from uh, from uh, from the agent uh, processes the request and uh, you, you will need to return uh, uh, well, the, well the data in in this format 
uh, back to the agent. And uh, uh, this uh, this data uh, has speech text and display text and maybe some data. Uh, and well, depending on the nature of your uh, uh, of your uh, solution of your bot, uh, the maybe uh, speech text will be sufficient. Then. Uh, uh, then using uh, one-click integration so uh, will come in very handy. So basically, uh, everything is connected to, through through the agent in, in API. Yeah. Awesome. I'm going to open up the floor, Pavel, uh, to anybody who has any questions. Um, this is really exciting. Like one of the things I really could see. Uh, yes, there's a need for apps to have their own bots, right? Um, I know, like for example, Expensify has a bot. It's like a concierge service. Right, because they know mm -hmm. yeah. they, they kind of know what thing where you're going to book a hotel at. They know what food you're going to get, where you're going to go out to eat. So they have kind of a concierge service. But I really, I think the magic one is you have 100,000 accountants whose clients will just call them and ask kind of small, easy questions. But it really adds up after a while to an accountant's day if they get five clients that call and ask a five-minute question. And so, like somebody building a, a full-blown app that accountants can just embed on their own web page. To where uh, their their small business clients can just come and say, um, "How much do I have in my bank account?" And they could just go through the chat bot to get that. It's kind of an interesting um, concept to where it's and you, instead of building any, a chat bot just for yourself or your own product, build a chat bot that others can embed on their page, which is really really interesting. Yeah, support is is a, a very popular use case uh, among our developers uh, because they really want to. Uh, to take off those very frequent requests uh, to the support, and uh, basically a chatbot can handle it uh, pretty easily. Yeah, I think I could suggest if some, anybody wants to take on the task of making me a chatbot and all the questions and emails I get from developers, that would be great. I would love to kind of see that happen. Um, hey, uh, Jack or Jonathan, or um, even Casey, uh, who just uh, talked, do you guys have any questions about uh, API.ai, or is it getting you excited? Are you seeing some use cases for the hackathon, possibly? So I would just say you're absolutely right. This is really cool. I'm actually seeing uh, a use for our support folks. <laughs> I don't know if it helps with the hackathon, but I'm looking at this going, this would really help in a couple of places. It's very cool. Thank you. And so uh, full circle, Casey, do you guys have, so I could, could I use some of my Postman scripts to test my API calls with API.ai? Is, is, are there pipes there for that? I, it's a good question and one that I, I I'm curious about, right? I don't I don't know is the short answer, but I'm I'm going to go find out the answer because it does seem like this would be a really like to your question, your example there of people call call in for five minutes and say um, call in you know ten times a day and say what how much is in my account? You'd want to be able to translate the question and then run. You can imagine running the right collection, right? The collection is if the if the request is you do these three things. This is these are the three you know three APIs you want to hit and pull it back together and answer it. So I I could see a lot of very interesting hacks with this. Yeah, this is uh, I, I I honestly think I, I feel my, my gut the uh, the biggest um, participation in that hackathon. Oh, I, I think the biggest integration at hackathon is definitely going to be either voice to QuickBooks or text to QuickBooks. Kind of this um abstraction of a interaction layer, right? So now you can have employees of your company or customers of your company interact with QuickBooks data without ever actually touching QuickBooks. And I think that's going to, like, I think that's going to be the big explosion, kind of what's next on the horizon. Um, it's exciting to, we're going to, I've been telling people that a year ago, year and a half ago, but now that we're actually going to have tools at the conference to let developers do this is just really, really exciting overall. Um, I'm super excited about this. Um, just a question I forgot to ask Casey, and uh, same for you, Pavel, and I don't care. Uh, maybe, Pavel, you could go first and Casey could jump in. So mm -hmm. I'm a developer now. I'm excited. I'm coming to the hackathon. What do I have to do to get going up on API to AI? Should I set it all up the night before? Can I set it up that morning? How long does it take? Do I need email verification? Kind of what's the overview for getting up and running? So, uh, yeah, I can I can show it here. So. Okay. So once you go... Uh, here, here, one click sign ins. You click uh, login with your uh, Gmail account, and there you go. This is how much time it gets. <laughs> just, just, just two, two seconds, and uh, you can create an agent uh, and. Uh,
uh, you can look through the docs uh, uh, and uh, well, no verification, nothing. There are some uh, guidelines, uh, like welcome guidelines, getting started pages. Uh, uh, it's uh, it's it's all pretty easy, and uh, we, we try to make the interface as intuitive as possible. And uh, your feedback will be very very helpful. Uh, uh, well, if you have any, uh, just let us know. Uh, in the Dev Console, there is a, uh, a intercom button uh, which you can click and uh, uh, start a conversation uh, with one of our uh, representatives. If you if you uh, if you uh, will explore API. I, uh, in advance, uh, so uh, it's, it's more likely that you will get uh, your questions uh, answered sooner. Uh, yeah, and uh, there will be someone uh, from our dev team uh, uh, at the hackathon uh, who, who will be happy to, uh, to answer your questions. Oh, this is great. Very, very exciting. Um, Casey, same with you. Like, how if somebody wants to use Postman, should I guess for, they could set that up now? Or should they wait till that morning? Uh, like, yeah, they can, they can definitely set it up that morning. But it, you know, getting the dev environment right beforehand is something I always kind of do. So um, let me just, I'll I'll share my screen too and just tell you, show you how to do it. It's um, so there are two two things you can do. One is um, let me just go over here. So if you go to um, getpostman.com, uh, which is our domain, you can download the apps from the home page. Or you can even go to our apps page, and that's where the all three of them are, and download and install it, so you can use it. And then the um, and then as I was talking about earlier, we have um, a paid product that allows the, the documentation and the monitoring, which is the, the kind of more expanded stuff that we can do. And somebody will be there to help you. But if you wanted to set up your team in advance, um, you would Postman Cloud is our paid product, and we have a 30-day free trial. So you, you, you have to supply an email address. You get one email to confirm it. It's done. I, I know I've set, I've set this up a number of times for people. It takes about five, 10 minutes tops. But the nice thing, if you set it up with your team in advance, is that you'd be able to use those team sharing things right off the bat. So you'd have your team library already set up because you, you, know, you have to coordinate between a couple of team members. Um, yeah. And you know, somebody will be there to help you out because this is very simple to do. But a free trial if you want to use the, more, the monitoring or the team sharing. But the free download for sure to start to write some of the, the API calls. Perfect. Uh, we're running up to about our last minute here, so I just want to close things off. Uh, Casey Pavel, thank you very, very much. Um, unfortunately, obviously, Pavel will not be at the Crips Connect Hackathon. Casey, will you be there? Yeah, yeah, I'll be there. Awesome. Uh, and, and or some, our CTO and our CEO are in town that yes, week, so a we'll, num number of folks will be there. Perfect, perfect. So I will uh, see you guys there. I'll see uh, Jonathan, I know you're doing the hackathon. I'll see you guys, see you there. Um, until then, I'll see you. Uh, there will not be a hackathon next Friday because, I mean, sorry, there will not be a hangout next Friday morning because we have um, the hackathons the next morning. It just doesn't make sense. Actually, I'll be on an airplane during this time next week. And I won't do it on the Friday of QuickBooks Connect because pretty much after five straight days of nothing but QuickBooks and hacking and developers, nobody wants to come to the hackathon to the hangout and talk more about uh, QuickBooks at that point. So we'll, we'll pick up in three weeks then. We'll, we'll, so we're looking at the week after Halloween. All right, everybody, thank you for coming and uh, look forward to seeing you soon. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Bye. -bye.